Hello once again, it's Pastor John Carlo from Christian Pentecostal Church in Staten Island, senior pastor there. And we've been studying the doctrine of angels, a very interesting subject if you've been following us. Again, just to renew, angels were created by God before even he created men and women. And unfortunately, due to one of the angels, I had a archangel named Lucifer, there was a rebellion in heaven, and a third of the angels followed Lucifer in a rebellion to take over heaven itself. So we see how these fallen angels became what we call demons. And it's interesting that as we read the scriptures, we find out things about them that we've talked about already as well. They know Jesus. They know their future. They know that they're going to be in the lake of fire. They know the saved from the unsaved. And we see at times they even experience emotion. Sometimes they possess great strength. And we see that basically everything they do is to oppose God's purpose and, and God's people. And they carry out Satan's orders. And they do it in so many different ways. For example, religion. As long as it doesn't bring people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, who's behind it? Satan himself and his angels, his demons. They, they, they want to see God's people arguing and not doing what they should be doing is bringing the gospel to everyone in the world for salvation. We also see in the Bible, Jesus in his ministry especially, shows us some of the things that demons have done to human beings or caused it. Deafness, epilepsy, blindness, suicide, mania, right? Personal injuries, physical defects. Again, without the protection of God, people who are following themselves or following the devil, maybe not even knowing it, are really at, at their, and, and they, and they can do anything to them. They don't have the protection of God. We also see that when it comes to demons and, and angels that have uh, gone the other way, that they have a purpose. And we're going to see not only that they have a perfect purpose now, but they have a great amount of work that they're doing and will do in the last times. We see that these satanic angels are going to be playing a very important part. For example, in Revelation 4, 6 to 8, we see that there are four living creatures, right? And these are angels that became demons. And they're going to be part of all the things that happened in the last times. The great army uh, that comes against Israel, 200 million or so people, and we see that the demons have a lot of the working and bringing all these countries and, and human beings together to come against God. We also see that as all this is going on, these demons are, are causing people's death and causing people to turn even more toward them, thinking that they're going to save them. We also read in the Word of God that the angels who became demons, and we see this in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, are going to be judged by Christ and his church at the end of time. And their ending is interesting because it's the same ending as the sinners who have not come to Christ, to be cast into the lake of fire forever. Matthew 25, 41, 2 Peter 2 and 4, and Jude 6. That is their end of their, their being as, as angels or even demons. They're going to be put in the lake of fire, and they're not going to die, as, as even the unsaved is not, are not going to die a spiritual death or even a physical death. They're going to be put in the same place. Imagine being punished forever and ever in pain because of the things that you have decided to do or not to do in Christ. So as we've been talking about these angels and all the things that go with them, 
that have become demons. Remember, we're talking about a third of the angelic beings, and we don't have a specific number of how many God created, but we see they're in the, probably in the trillions of numbers if we had to number them. Imagine Satan being able to convince a third of heaven to follow him. Now, I'm looking at it in a physical perspective. If you could see the throne of God and all the majesty of God and all the power of God that's in the presence of God, how in the world could you turn away from him and follow just one person, Lucifer, against God? It's really kind of a almost unbelievable situation that this angel named Lucifer, who was an archangel, is able to convince a third of these beings who are in the presence of God all the time to follow him. It, again, it's, it's one of those things I just have a problem with and trying to understand why they would do that. But again, we see that when people turn away from God, a lot of things they do don't make any sense. Of course, we know unfortunately that the ending of this whole story. Also remember that even God's angels are assigned different duties. We talked about that. And they also have different characteristics, even in what they, what they appear to be. When we read some of the descriptions of them in the word as we go through it. As we close, next week, we're going to start a study of the Holy Spirit. We've done a part of it already, but we want to we want to speak about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was that gift, that, that prophecy, that we're in that day right now, where, the, where it's not only the Spirit of God in the Word of God, but it's the Spirit of God that dwells in us. We're going to be talking about that, and hopefully we'll learn a lot more about it. Let me end with this. And it's very interesting. It's found in the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the second verse. It says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Again, it's kind of interesting that at times it's possible that we have come across an angel and not realized who it was. Now, is it a test? I don't know. But the Word of God is telling us to help people. And I think a lot of it has to do with what God is doing for us. We can't do anything for God in the sense of He doesn't need anything. But we can surely bless His creation. We can bless the people that He has created by helping them. Now, whether they come to God or not, that's not up to us. But our testimony of helping and hopefully being an example of the believers will lead people to Christ.